Vista Tower is a 101 story cast in place structure. Some of the challenges of building Vista here in the city of Chicago is it's actually uh, blocked in by other surrounding existing buildings. In addition, we have Wacker Drive here, which you're gonna hear in the background, um, which was remained active during the entire construction process. The challenges of this project due to the design was amazing. There's a unique geometry to it, comprised of stacked frustums. A frustum is basically a pyramidal shape with the top uh, truncated off. So um, these, these truncated shapes that are basically 13 stories tall are stacked and inverted on top of each other to create the unique form. Our initial thought was that we would slope the perimeter columns, but it was determined to be more uh, cost effective and, and quicker to construct if we would just take the columns and shift them by five inches at each level up through the 13-story frustum. The floor plates uh, vary from 80 feet by 80 foot square, and then they extend to 90 feet by 90 foot square. When you're dealing with tall and super tall buildings, the lateral system is always very important. And so um, with a building of 100 stories, the, the central core uh, that contains your vertical circulation and elevators uh, was not substantial enough to resist the, the, the lateral forces. We uh, grabbed on to the perimeter wall on both the north and south side of the building for the 100-story tower to create a more robust uh, core with a, a greater stance. On the 50-story tower, we just reached out to the south and grabbed on the, the south wall. We didn't do anything in the 75-story tower other than we connected these two cores, this dual core system, with a spine wall in the east-west direction. And that provides us our lateral system. We also needed to deal with um, building accelerations and occupant comfort. We needed to add uh, sloshing dampers in this tower. Uh, so there's about 400,000 gallons of water in tanks in this building near the top that uh, when the building starts to sway, the water goes and the building comes back and it, it settles the building down very quickly. Uh, we found that that wasn't even quite enough. Uh, so we also introduced the, the level that we're standing on right now, level 83, which is a two-story space, and it's a blow-through hole. So it doesn't have cladding around the perimeter. The wind is al allowed to blow through the building. The, the blow-through floor in combination with the sloshing dampers reduced the, um, uh, the cross-wind response on the building by about 24%. The site itself presents some challenges that are not present in other uh, city infill sites. The soil for this area is um, it's fairly soupy at the top, and so you have to go down pretty deep to get to um, you know, hard pan, dense clay that has the bearing capacity that we need. We have 24 rock caissons that are 10 foot in diameter that go down to bedrock, um, and then there's another 120 or so bell or straight caissons that went in. They went in on time, on schedule with no delay. We've got glass that came out of Germany, Interpane, which is a custom coated system. There's six different colors of glass on the building, and it was able to give it the undulations of, of the color that they were looking for. Uh, you can't do it with simple coatings. You have to actually go to Germany, and they've developed a system where you can do coating on demand. The gradient does a couple of things. First of all, the uh, lighter glass is used on the deeper floor, so it lets the light penetrate deeper in. As the floors get smaller, the glass gets darker and reduces the heat gain. So it, it functions as an important energy savings in that manner. Uh, the other thing it does is it relates to the, the glass colors were chosen to relate to the colors down the lake. And the gradient emphasizes that curve and wave that you get across the building and the little ripples that you see in the building and are sort of mirrored in the, in the lake itself. 